Hi, I'm Rob D from Property Hub, and this week, Rob B and I are talking property strategies. There are so many to choose from, but which is right for you? Stick around and you'll find out. Let's start with HMOs. So an HMO is a house in multiple occupation. That just means a house that's rented out by the room to people who are not part of the same family. The benefit of an HMO is that it offers better cash flow than single lets. You can normally charge more by renting out a house by the room than you could if you were renting it out as one unit. That means you end up generating more cash than you would for a normal single let. Great. The downside is it's more work to manage. You've got lots of different people, which means there's always going to be someone moving in, someone moving out. There's often going to be people falling out with each other. There's going to be more wear and tear to the property because it's being more heavily used. And there's more licensing requirements as well. There's going to be more that you need to keep on top of. So HMOs could be great for you if you've got cash to invest and you want to replace your income really, really quickly. The most important thing to you is not long-term gain, but short-term gain. And that's going to sound appealing to a lot of people, but you do also need to make sure that you've got time to do it properly. The next strategy you could consider is flipping. Flipping isn't some circus trick, it's actually a property strategy. You buy a property, you will often do some work on it, and then you will sell it on or flip it on with the intention of making a profit. Some people will even buy property and flip it on without doing any work to make a profit. But as you can appreciate, that's hard to do. Plus, you don't have to let it out to anybody. So you don't have the hassle of looking after a tenant. And that will appeal to some people as well. So loads of money and easier to manage? No brainer, right? Well, there are some downsides. The first of which is this strategy is very hands on. You've got to spend time looking for these deals. Just because a property is run down doesn't mean it's a good opportunity for a flip. It might not be the right price. So you have to do your numbers, make sure it works. And more often than not, most properties that are run down aren't priced correctly for an effective flipping strategy. So you will need to make sure you spend time there. And the process of refurbishing these properties will also require a lot of your time. It may look glamorous on the TV, but when you're returning to that property evening after evening, weekend after weekend, the allure quickly disappears. While you can potentially get big chunks of money from adopting this strategy, what you will not get is a consistent income because once you've sold the property, that's it, the asset is no longer yours. Whereas if you kept hold of the property, you can rent it out and produce an income month after month for as long as you own it. Which means for people who are after a longer term income, flipping may not be right for them. So flipping is probably best for people who want a profit now they want to build up a cash pot and having money today rather than something and paying them ongoing is the priority. If you're handy, you can do some of the refurb work yourself and don't have to manage other people, then this strategy may be one for you to consider. Another strategy to consider is buy, refurb, refinance. What's that? Well, the name kind of gives it away. You buy a property, you conduct some kind of refurbishment to increase its value, then you refinance the property at its increased value. The benefit is you end up with less cash tied up in each deal. You can think about it like if you bought a property and then 10 years later it's gone up in value and it's worth more, you'd be able to refinance the property at that point and pull a lot of your cash back out again so you could use it to make further investments. Buy, refurb, refinance is basically using the refurb portion of that to speed that process right up. You're forcing the property of the value to go up so you're not relying on the market, you're doing it yourself by making improvements. So a lot of the points that go for flips also apply to buy, refurb, refinance because the process is largely the same. Because you're leaving less cash in a deal by pulling a lot of your initial capital back out again, that does mean that you can build a bigger portfolio even if you've got limited funds. And that's really the big advantage of this strategy. But of course, there are disadvantages as well. Again, just like with flips, there's a lot of effort involved. You have to find a property that's priced correctly in the first place. You have to do or manage all the work to bring it up to scratch and then go through all the paperwork of getting it refinanced. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not something where you can just buy a property and forget about it. And there is risk, of course. There's the risk that you'll buy at the wrong price or you'll overspend on the refurb or the valuer, when it gets to the end, won't give you the valuation you want. And that can bring you to a dead stop because you were relying on pulling your capital back out again, but it might end up stuck. 
So this strategy might be appropriate for you if you've got ambitions that are bigger than your bank account. You want to build a big portfolio, but you're going to struggle to save up for multiple deposits so you can buy multiple properties. This allows you to recycle one deposit and use the same cash again and again. So clearly that's going to be appealing to a lot of people. But again, don't forget this is work. It's hands on and you have to be prepared to put in the effort if you want the results. The next strategy you could consider is rent to rent. Rent to rent means that you take a property from an existing landlord and then take it to market. You may have improved the property, you may have upgraded it slightly, or you may be now letting it buy the room instead of a whole one unit and making a profit. The profit you make will be the difference between the rent you pay the landlord and the rent you manage to achieve, hence the name rent to rent. Now the great thing about this strategy is that there's limited money to get involved. You don't need a pot of cash to get started. You just need hard work, you need to network, and you need a good solid plan to present to landlords. Why would landlords entertain this? Well, they may be fed up of managing their property and would love somebody to take it off their hands. You've got to find those landlords, but they will exist. So no money in and profit every month? What are the downsides? Well, you don't actually own an asset. There is no growth. One of the big benefits of property investment is that the assets you own go up in value over time. You never own the properties here. So it isn't actually true property investment. In fact, it's more of a job or a business. You're actually using property as a tool. But like any job or business, you're going to need to put in a lot of time and effort to make it work. It may sound good making money with no money in, but like all good things, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And the truth here is that while you can make passive income every single month with not, not putting much money in, you are going to sacrifice your time and you are going to need to put a lot of effort in. Because finding these landlords is not an easy job. And then, of course, once you've eventually found one who's willing to adopt this strategy with you, you then have to manage the properties. Something also many other people don't consider is the amount of regulation that is tied up within adopting this strategy. A landlord may be willing to do this, but will their mortgage allow them? You have to be careful and make sure the landlord checks the rules and regulations around their lending and from when you let it out, what are you allowed to do in that local area? You can't just take a five bed house, split it up, and turn it into a 10 bedroom rental. There are regulations around this and you will need to make sure that you are on the right side of the law. So who will this strategy suit? Well, if you have no cash, but you want to start to build a pot up, then this strategy may appeal. There are probably better options out there. So lots of different strategies out there. You've heard the pros, you've heard the cons, and now you can pick out the ones that sound best and delve a little deeper. The ultimate strategy though, is subscribing to this channel. So make sure you do that now.